my name is Jasmine Rast, and I'm the one of the owners of uh, Roy Station Coffee and Teas in Japantown. My grandfather and his brothers initially ran the gas station, and it was uh, Joe, Mike, and Roy. And then, uh, but they were all still drafted, so they had to wait a few years after the draft and everything. But they, uh, my grandfather's family was in Gila, so they were in uh, Arizona. So it started off Joe, Mike, and Roy's. Then Mike, as family businesses goes, everybody branches off. So Mike branched off, then it became Mike and or it became Joe and Roy's. And then after a while, Joe was split off, so it just became Roy. My grandfather ran the gas station until about uh, 1990. Then it was just paved over. My grandfather didn't know what to do with it. Just kind of let it sit. He rented it to Golden Bay for storage. Um, everyone kind of parked their cars around here. Um, it was just not a lot going on. And so my dad actually was the one who was like, we've always, we need a hub. We need a place for people to meet. And so he said, a coffee shop. So he proposed a coffee shop that's 2007, right when Starbucks is like gaining momentum mm -hmm. and people understand that. Um, he proposed it to my grandfather and my grandfather and grandmother thought he was crazy. They were <laughs> like, I can make coffee at home. Why would I? He's like, no, there's a, these other coffees like lattes and mochas. And they're like, who would spend $6 on a mocha? That's, that's, that's ridiculous. You bake coffee, I'm making the coffee maker, Folgers. So, took some took some convincing, mm -hmm. but uh, we uh, started the process, and it took us a good two years to get it from initial stage to opening. Mm -hmm. So, um, my dad and I did a lot of the work ourselves. Um, he's a general contractor, and I was working with him at the time. But I think um, what has kept Japan Town kind of like this hidden jewel is the fact that. Um, We've worked together to kind of keep it mom and pop, small people who are very involved in community, who want to um, kind of build something together as a community. My real name is James Nagareta, and I'm currently the executive director of the Japanese American Museum. Actually, when I was in high school, I used to go to the gas station, um, partly because it was closed, but I uh, close by, but I also because you know I wanted to support the local businesses. Um, and I just remember, you know, being really nice to me. And those were back in the days where they actually used to pump the gas for you sometimes, you know, and they don't do that kind of stuff anymore. So it was just fun to go there and chat with Roy and talk about what's going on. Um, and so it's great that the family has taken over and they've been such an asset to the community in many, many different ways. Um, it actually starts with the Chinese. There were um, several different Chinatowns in San Jose, and one of the most popular or famous ones is actually right where the Fairmont Hotel is. And that particular Chinatown was suspiciously burned down, and uh, we think that you know they were possibly trying to move them out of the area because that was. Even back then, that was kind of prime area. And they moved um, to a couple different places and finally settled in um, at six and Taylor, excuse me, six and yeah, at six and Taylor Street. And uh, that became known as Heinlandville because the owner of the property was John Heinlein, he's a German, and he um, built the town where it had um, brick, uh, it was bricks around it because then they couldn't burn them down. But with the Japanese coming in for agriculture, eventually more and more people came. Um, they did business with the Chinese um, and sometimes even borrowed money and things like that. Um, 
And so by the early 1900s, uh, the Japanese started establishing some businesses um, and started establishing churches and things like that and building a community. But, um, you know, the Japanese were sent to, to the camps during World War II. And um, this area was actually known as Chinatown until maybe the 60s or so, it started becoming known as Japantown. 